Hello fellow SI experts. So in this lecture, we are going to just take another example of a unicast traffic packet or frame throughout from an endpoint to another endpoint through the fabric and talking about the tables that will be consulted based on what we discussed in the previous lecture. Okay, so let's say we have this setup. So here I have the ACI fabric. Okay, I have physical server that is connected to a layer two switch that could be a Nexus 5K, um, Nexus 6A, whatever. And then that is connected here to the ACI leaf switch. And then I have on the other side, a virtual switch in a controller. Okay, so that could be for this example, a Microsoft SC VMM or System Center Virtual Machine Manager controller hosting one VM that this server needs to communicate with. So the server, the application sends the packet out, it has a payload and it has an, a dis, an IP address header, source port, source um, IP address, destination port, destination IP address. So here the source port will be the server IP address or the application IP address, uh, the server IP, IP address. The source port will be depending on the application. And then the destination IP address will be the IP address of the virtual machine it needs to talk to and the destination port for the application. Okay, so that gets sent on this port and that port and then the switch will send it with Ethernet headers and VLAN headers as a trunk to the ACI leaf switch. Okay, so this is what arrives at the ACI leaf switch. What will the leaf switch do? First of all, it will consult its Exactly, local station table because maybe the destination is connected here. I don't know, okay? Now there is no match because it's on the other side. It's not local at all. Okay, second step, same leaf switch is going to consult its global station table. Why? It's trying to find out the IP, the corresp it, it knows about the IP. So it's trying to find out if it has a match for the destination IP in its global station table and then find the Mac and then find the third one is exactly. So the egress switch VTIP IP address. So which switch is it, is this connected to, right? Okay, so if it finds out the information and it knows about it, it's going to forward it to the egress leaf switch, right? In what? In a VXLAN format. And the egress leaf switch then will uh, receive it. It will know the source endpoint group because that was appended to the VXLAN headers. It will know the source MAC and the source IP because they are carried with the VXLAN, okay? And it will then find out in its own local station table, where is the destination IP, the corresponding Mac, and what kind of encapsulation it should use. Does it need to send it with VLAN headers? It will do it one queue, VXLAN, or uh, does it need to send it as uh, an NVGRE in our case? Okay, now what if the ingress leaf switch did not find in its global station table the egress VTAP IP and the, the MAC corresponding to that enter. So basically it didn't know which switch to send it to. In this case, it's going to encapsulate it also in VXLAN, but here the spine proxy will be the destination IP address. The, the VTAP of the spine proxy is going to be my destination IP address. And I'm going to encapsulate it and send it to exactly the spine switch. And the spine switch will look in its global station table and finds out that it knows about where this one is and it's going to send it to the VTIP IP address. So it will re-encapsulate it again and now adding the egress VTIP address as the destination IP address in the outer headers of the VXLAN headers and will send it down and then this switch is going to find it and look at its own local station table, find out, finds out that this is connected locally finds the right format and then removes all the previous headers and then add the NVGRE and the outer headers to send it to the SCVMM controller, okay? And eventually the SCVMM will receive it, remove all the headers and then will allocate it or send it to the right virtual machine. And here is the packet arrived. Now a question, although it's not discussed in, in this example, I want to ask you a question now. 
where will the policy be implemented in the two cases so if this switch knew how to send that directly into the egress leaf switch and if this switch did not know and sent it to the proxy so the first case come on guys which one so the first one the ingress leaf switch knows that it needs to send it to the vtip ip address knows about the switch and knows the ip and mac pair as well so it knows the ip for the destination it has it in the in the table it knows the mac address and it knows which vtip I, uh, to send it to so what do you think come on guys how would it know about the ip and mac and the vtip so that should mean that previous traffic from that endpoint from the virtual machine came to the switch right and came to the physical server or else how would the uh, leaf switch know about it if it is caching it if it is an entry in its own global station table that means there is a timer remember guys when we said when we talked about the retention policy there is a timer and as long as the timer did not expire the entry remains in its own station table right if the timer does not about to expire and another pra packet comes from the virtual machine to the physical server the entry gets refreshed and the timers gets reset and the counting starts again so if it knows about it that means it knows everything about it and it will know because prior traffic came carrying the source epg also for the virtual machine so that means it knows everything about it. So the policy will be applied here before the VXLAN is sent within the fabric. If it does not know, it did not find in the global station table anything about the virtual machine and it decided to send it to the proxy, then the policy will not be implemented here. But when the spine sends the packet to the egress leaf switch with the VXLAN headers here from this leaf switch before he sent it out, he would include the source EPG of the physical server. So when it arrives here, it does have the source EPG and the ACI leaf switch knows which EPG the virtual machine belongs to or the destination EPG. So it will apply the policy here, right? So this is one thing you need to remind yourself of um, as you look at examples or try to analyze traffic and situations and what happens and all that, okay? So some comments, unknown layer two or layer three unicast data traffic is sent to the spine proxy. We know that unknown layer two unicast data traffic will be dropped by the spine of new no information is available about the destination Vita. So in case that an endpoint exists or maybe it is still connected or maybe it got disconnected, it went down and a server on the other side doesn't know that send it to the leaf switch leaf switch will send it to the proxy but the proxy doesn't find it it will drop it if it was a layer two if it was a layer three and it arrives at the spine and the spine doesn't know about it it will send an arp to all leaf switches with member in that subnet so it will send it to all the leaf switches that know about this subnet and wait until one of the leaf switches responds if one does then it will rewrite the, the, v, the VXLAN headers and send it to that leaf switch that responded. Spine switches synchronize their host database, global station tables. So don't worry about that. We have multiple spine switches. It doesn't make sense that one of them will know more than the others. That's why they are synchronizing their information all the time. VXLAN is primarily a layer two overlay. We know that. In standard VXLAN, Flooding is flooding via multicast is the main way to forward unknown traffic. Okay, but in Cisco, we learned that if it doesn't know, it will send it to the proxy, right? So it send this, sends it as unicast to the proxy. If it can, if the traffic, it, if it doesn't know that, uh, the, uh, if it is unknown uh, multicast or broadcast, it will send it through limited flooding or optimized flooding. So SAI builds cache tables, global station table, local station table, and LBM tables to forward unicast traffic or use, pro, uh, uh, or use spine proxy for unknown unicast data. Remember what we mentioned about ARP and DHCP. We said also the leaf switch, if it was in a, in a ordinary or normal uh, layer two VXLAN overlay network, the DHCP and ARP will be flooded by default. 
In ACI, they are not flooded by default. They are converted into unicast and sent to the spine for the spine to forward it. Okay, so that's again a shift from the standard VX, VX LAN layer 2 overlay. Also, ACI, ACI uses standard VXLAN flooding via multicast for broadcast and multicast traffic. ARP and um, uh, DHCP are exceptions to that. Cool. So in the next lecture, we are going to cover the multicast handling in ACI. So stay tuned. Take a break if you want. Come back fresh. And we'll see you in the next lecture.